Hello and welcome to Atomic Face Palm. This is Chris. And I'm Bree. And this is Game of the Year 2017. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Once again, you can always hit subscribe. We would love that so, so much. It'd be a great Christmas present, actually. And you can always leave a comment and tell us your thoughts. Uh, whatever you like, actually. be fine. So, Game of the Year 2017. We're going to kind of do this in a sort of fashion. So, let's break it down. We reviewed quite a few games this year, which I'll go through in a second. But we didn't each play all of the games because sometimes we would play a game... I'd play a game. Or I'd uh, be really bad at a game and give up and rage quit out of a game. Sometimes I'd be really bad at a game. Or I'd be too scared of a game. Sure. Resident Evil 7. (laughs) And I'd quit. (laughs) Yeah. So there's a lot of different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So what we're going to do is we're going to have two. Two games of the year for Atomic Face Palm. One for me, one for Brie. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some honorable mentions. We'll have the shame of the year, which I slotted in, which really was kind of a slam dunk for me. But... We're gonna I, go right I wasn't in. prepared for a shame oh, of the year. Oh, you don't have to do one. I just okay. be funny because it rhymes with game. <laughs> gotcha. I like okay. rhymes. Okay. All right. So let, before we do anything, let me read down the list of the games we reviewed in 2017. Now, we actually reviewed more games than this, but these are the games that came out in 2017. Okay. Here we go. Space Hulk Deathwing. Spoiler, it's game of the year. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Walking Dead, A New Frontier. Another close contender for game of the year. No. Pit People, Early Access. So I put this one on here, and I think it's okay to include early access games uh, for games of the year. For example, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which neither of us played. Uh, that's early access technically; hasn't released, so you know. At this have... point, if people are putting games out there and saying, "Hey, it's early access," then you're open yourself up to some criticism, or sure. good or bad. Good or bad, okay. yeah. Okay, continuing on, Resident Evil Seven, which Bree just mentioned, Night in the Woods, which I oddly forgot about and was like, "Oh, probably should have thought more about that one for this." Torment, Tides of Numenera, Hollow Knight, Near Autonoma, or Near Automata, depending on how you pronounce it, Flint Hook, What Remains of Edith Finch, another really good game, actually, mm-hmm. Strafe, Little Nightmares, Pyre, Divinity, Original Sin 2, Hob, Cuphead, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, and Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Now, I want to say, a very strong year in gaming. Yeah, seriously. As you're reading through that, I was like, shoot, I should have... Uh, I forgot about What Remains of Edith Finch. Not that it's yeah. my game of the year, but that is definitely a... It was quick. It was a quick game, but man, did I I loved it. <laughs> so. No, uh, these, with the exception of a couple, which I'll go into in my shames of the year, uh, were actually, I would say, pretty strong contenders. Now, there's a lot of games here, so we had to boil them down when it came to our own ones. But mm-hmm. just to put that in perspective, 2017, again, good year for gaming. All of these games, for the most part, were a lot of fun. Some of them were tough. Some of them were different. But strong, strong choices this year. Mm-hmm. Which made it tough for me, honestly. Because there's a lot of games that we actually kind of skipped over or didn't play. Like, yeah. I, I still haven't gotten around to Horizon Zero Dawn, which I actually re- oh, really crap, liked to spend like a month on my couch playing that. Yeah, that came out this year. But we didn't. We, neither yeah. of us played it. I don't even own it. I really actually m- think about buying that for myself for Christmas. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. I, I a did self this. Christmas present. Yeah, why? Why can't you give yourself? Because Christ- usually you want to wait for other people to maybe give you the present before you open it. I don't know. I didn't say it had to be on Christmas Day. Oh, okay. I'm just calm down. Calm down. Calm. <laughs> I'm very calm. No, it's good. Uh, but I just, I mean, there's a lot of games that we didn't play. Um, Prey isn't on there. and You, you know, can pray for a little bit. Yeah, but we didn't actually no, review it. or yeah. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of other games that were the Mass Effect game, which I don't think is anybody's <laughs> game of the year. I don't think that would have been up here. But yeah, yeah, again, not a bad game, but I understand just not a fantastic game. Yeah, but still a good year for games. Sure. That's my point. And I actually sort of erred, I believe, here. Now, we didn't review these, but maybe again worth mentioning, a lot of actually pretty good VR games. Mm-hmm. I was also maybe maybe I'm thinking like do a quick VR game of the year, but I feel like VR is finally sort of figuring out what it is. And, uh, yeah, and there's a, so much early access and an early access in the stage of like this, like my favorite VR game, Space Pirate Trainer, actually recently just completely changed because it got such a big update. And now it's a whole different like this whole different sections, yeah. and so VR early access games really are early access for some of those. Yeah, a lot of them are very experimental. <clears throat> Um, Which is fine. I feel like that's an okay kind of playground for that stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? But uh, yeah, VR does feel like a playground at this point. Um, there, there have been attempts very recently, 
such as, but they're not really new games, like Fallout 4 VR, mm-hmm. Doom VFR. There are games now that have a distinct start, middle, and finish with a linear type of progression. Um, Skyrim, but that's for the PlayStation VR, which we don't own. So they're getting there. But I got to say, just a quick shout out, Robo Recall was amazing. That'd probably be my VR game of the year, honestly. Mm-hmm. Robo Recall was fantastic. So it's getting there. Maybe next year, it'll, it'll be contenders with some of these other games. Who knows? So just a little shout out there to those guys. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm, well, here's what I'm going to do. Where you can do something different, right? But mm-hmm. I'm going to boil it down to what I came up with for my top five games I really had to kind of juggle here. So my top five are Resident Evil 7, Hollow Knight. That should be no surprise. I don't know if you can see it. There's actually a little little Hollow Knight guy here. But he's not actually the Hollow Knight, as it turns out. I could go and talk about that. (laughs) Divinity, Original Sin 2, Hob, rest in peace, Runic Studios, a sad note there, and Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Wolfenstein stuck up on the list for me. Mm -hmm. So those are mine that I was going to kind of mull over, think about, and decide. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know what the top one of yours is going to be. Uh, yeah, I had kind of, I did it a little bit different. I had my kind of, I picked my one of the year and then I had two runners up. Ah, uh, what were your runners up out of curiosity? Um, Hob. Yeah. And then I was really, so I kept it to three and it was really um, Divinity, Original Sin 2 or Wolfenstein. And I was really kind of going back and forth about which one mm. would be my third, you know, runner up. Mm. I think that they're both good games, but um, I'm going to go with Wolfenstein 2. Surpri- uh, yeah. Yeah. That's surprising. Not because you're saying, just because this game, we both played it, and we were like, yeah, we'll play it. We haven't played a first-person shooter in a while. What the hell? Give it a shot. And both of us were kind of like, wow, that was a really good game that seemingly came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, We really liked it. Um, For me, I would say Wolfenstein 2, I don't know if I call it a runner-up or whatever. It was definitely up there. Um, I guess, so for my analysis, I was just trying to think about the games that made me feel the strongest um not necessarily yeah. about the pull of wanting to play the game again and again which i feel like divinity original sin 2 had going for it mm-hmm. um but when i look back at my experience playing wolfenstein i definitely have a strong emotional reaction to that yeah. game and how it made me feel um so that's why it ended up on my list yeah i, I think for me personally <clears throat> when i think of a game of the year one obviously it's how much time i wanted to spend with the game mm-hmm. how much it hooked me even when i wasn't playing it such as was i looking up lore about it Was I trying to figure out new strategies? Was I going to the community to see if there's some way for this game that I was missing or secrets? Um, I also looked at overall lasting appeal. Like, am I going to go back and play this game? I think for me, that's an important concept Mm -hmm. because a lot of my games of the year in the past, Skyrim, Oblivion, blah, 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 you can play those games over and over even now. Um, For in fact, this is going way back, but um, a game called Breath of Fire 3, which released for the PlayStation 1, I'm replaying now and I love it. So there you go, right? There are games that last for a long time. So I will go ahead and rule out for my game of the year. I will rule out. Wolverine You're not Sunshine. just gonna. We're gonna go. We're gonna cut through. You just go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm gonna it. try just... and get. I'm gonna try and get mine to three, just like you. Okay. Because I think three is a good round number, odd number. Okay. Number. Whenever you you're ready. So? Whenever you're ready. I don't know. Okay. I would cut out Wolfenstein too, um, and I would probably cut out. Resident Evil 7. Now, I will say again, Resident Evil 7 came out early in the year. It was one of the first games we reviewed for 2017. Uh, that was another game that took me by surprise. Mm-hmm. I really liked the Resident Evil series up until like Resident Evil 3, and then it just kind of fell apart for me. And then this game came along and sort of rebooted it, uh, very much in vain of the first Resident Evil for PlayStation, and I had a really good time playing it. Scary as hell, short game, uh, but overall, like you were saying, emotionally, it, like it kind of hit me emotionally, and it's... A lot of replayability to it. So that one's definitely for me. Yeah. So for me, that would leave Hollow Knight, Divinity Original Sin 2, and Hop. Okay. Yeah. So. My game of the year? Is that what we're... I don't know. Do we want to talk about that? I, I don't know. So. I, <laughs> this is why I tried to ask about format before we started. What, what are we doing format. here? <laughs> I think what we should do is <clears throat> we talked about your runners up. Mm-hmm. So why don't we do this? You can say your game of the year, and I'll say mine, and we can kind of talk about why we think they're that. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So this is tough for me. Um, I will say I I narrowed it down. Uh, Hob is a great game. We had a lot of fun playing Hob. Um, A little emotional for a lot of reasons because of Runic Studios getting shut down, which is really, really devastating. Um, We have friends over there. Um, I, I basically started my career with Runic, so there's a lot of side interest in that. But all that said, Hob was a very good game. 
So for me, Hob was just a kind of game that I absolutely love, the kind of exploring the environment, sneaking around. Everything's kind of a mystery. You're trying to find secrets, but it's at the same time very relaxed and mellow. Um, definitely like exactly my kind of game. Like there isn't any other, you know, it's just kind of mellow and puzzly and yeah. our unique world. Um, the music was nice. I really enjoyed the part of Hob I loved the most was you find these like scenic overlooks and it's just kind of this moment to like it pans out yeah. and shows you the whole world and you see how beautiful it is and unique and cool and it just like can take the reward is the game itself like kind of like look at how pretty this is and I'm like yeah yeah that, I like that so um, Hob was really I'd say number two for me for sure yeah I think it's probably number two for me as well um, again I love games that don't rely on strict expository dialogue mm -hmm. and this was a game that relied more on just feel and emotion conveyed through animations and through um, paying attention to the world around you and again this was a game that literally built itself as you went through it the world wasn't there and you kind of have reconstruct it and get rid of the viruses which I akin to uh, a, a more a moral moral no not a moral of a story a metaphor that's what I'm looking for like a metaphor for game development so yeah Hobbs there with me too um, it might shock you that my game of the year is Divinity Original Sin 2. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I really, really struggled with this. Um, I love Hob probably more than any mortal human being should. I champion Hob. I, I love that game so much. The problem with me for Hob is I went back into it and I played it um, two or three months ago. I reviewed it a while ago. And it's great when I played through it the first time. I don't know how much I'll play through it again. Okay, so for me that is just not even a contender as something because I don't really replay games. Like I'm not somebody that plays retro games, like maybe a Zelda here and there, but like very rarely do I ever replay a game. It's just not something yeah. I do, and that's um, perfectly valid. I mean, so we're gonna have different opinions. I, kind of my one of my, you know, things yeah. that I need for. Uh, but that was one of many reasons. So again, Hob uh, rewards exploring. It has again that sort of unspoken uh, story. There's no real dialogue. I mean, there are little translations here and there, but it's it's done through in a way that makes you wonder and you kind of interpret the game as you go along. Um, the art design is incredible and the sound is amazing. But for me, I, I look at Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, you and I played that together, co-op, mm -hmm. which I think is a fantastic feature. That's not something you can do in, in um, Hollow Knight. Mm-hmm. And I think I actually anticipated playing to be in the original sin two more. There were times where I was like, Bree, come on, let's play it. And you're like, yeah, we need to like go to sleep. Or like, can we like edit a video? Like, no, let's play the game instead. It really, I still kind of want to play it. it I think it grabbed been... you a lot harder than it grabbed me. Yeah. Um, for me, I really like the combat in that game. Like, I like the strategic and trying to, we bashed our head against a really hard enemy again and again, trying to get it down. Um the in-between parts, sometimes you get to a new town, I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to have to talk to like 30 people to get all the quests in this town. Like, just mm. I just I want to go out there and I want to fight with this game. Um, so towards the end, it started to be like, okay, all, all right, let's, yeah. I don't know, something about it kind of faded for me where you were still really on board with that. I was. I like all that stuff. Um, it's a role-playing staple, but I enjoy getting all that backstory. I enjoyed talking to everybody in the town. Um, and I really like this sort of kind of light combative element that Larian Studios gave players where you can just play stuff in other people's inventories. If you're playing co-op, you can kind of screw with each other. It's sort of that fun kind of do what you want to do as far as it goes if you're playing multiplayer. Um, it even sort of sets you both in divergent paths mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Um, what I love about that game is it seemingly is just a fantasy basic game, right? elves, uh, lizard people, dwarves, but it really takes those genres and those stereotypes and flips them on their back. Um, I never felt like it was Tolkien-esque. I never felt like it was like any other role-playing game. It was very much its unique thing. Mm -hmm. And again, turn-based combat is actually very hard to pull off well. Um, a lot of people are trying it recently because it's making a comeback, but this game does it incredibly well. That's the part that I like the most. Like, I just wanted to always be fighting, fighting yeah. around the world there. Um, even though everything would light on fire or be poisoned or whatever, I just really liked. And I also liked doing that combat, you know, turn-based combat co-op. It was yeah. kind of like, I didn't know what you were going to do when we kind of worked together, but we didn't always, you know, I don't know. 
It was fun seeing we'd have we actually plan these out sometimes. Sometimes you're running and just get our asses kicked and it was like, oh, all right, we'll do this next time. But then something crazy would happen like you're saying. Someone would throw a fireball by accident or you'd try and do a spell and just all chaos would break loose. And it felt like real combat where you have plans, but you've got to improvise because stuff goes wrong fast. Yeah. Everything is on fire. Yeah, all everything the time. is on fire all of the time. <laughs> and all the animals are miserable <laughs> yes. in that game. And there's so many different like areas. I feel like that's a game that there you could play it three times and still not come across everything because there's so many different traits you can have and so many different things you can interact with. It's just I, I applaud their effort. It's a huge game. Um, for me, it was, again, my my gut was like, oh, just go with Hollow Knight because that's the easy one. But the more I thought about it, Hollow Knight's fantastic, but Divinity kind of got me more. I think Divinity 2, Original Sin 2, is the better game. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now... I think I've been talking about this game all year. So it's for me, it's Nier Automata. That's my game of the year. Yeah. For absolutely. Um, there was just something about that story was just kind of so strange and different. Um, I really like the idea of how there was different layers of the story that come about as you play through it more and you kind of dive a little deeper. And so at first, it's just kind of this action RPG and really slashy. But as you go through it, it had so much more depth. And... When I walked away from that game, I think I had just had such strong emotions towards those characters and what happened. It was just so much unique stuff going on that I, it's my game of the year, hands down. There just nothing has made me feel that strongly since. And I got to say, your uh, affection for it is um, addicting because I actually really wanted to play it too. Um, for whatever reason, it has weird compatibility issues with my computer. I Apparently, some people had issues with it too. You played it on PC? I did, and um, it was it's supposed to be a pretty terrible port, a PC port. Um, I had a few crashes, but otherwise it ran fine for me. I didn't really have that many problems with yeah, it. Yeah, I, I almost just bought it on our PS4, and I probably will end up doing that, because I still really do want to play it. When we went to PAX East, and, and one more PAX West, or PAX Prime, whatever the hell they're calling it now, there's a lot of cool cosplay. This is a game I think that's going to become a sleeper hit, maybe like a cult classic. It seems like there's a lot of people that really do like that game, but oddly enough, I didn't see it really mentioned in other people's game of the years. Um, really? I've seen it around. Yeah. People that played it, I feel, love it. It's like, I think you say, like, cult classic, where it's not necessarily a game that everybody got to play this year, because it came out kind of like Resident Evil. It was like in that middle of all those other yeah. games coming out, like, bam, bam, bam. The beginning of this year was really strong with a lot of games. Um, But I feel like people that played it, love it like i always yeah. see that on twitter like if you played this game you love this game i don't know but maybe it isn't for everyone i don't care i don't care <laughs> it I, was the game for me it really was um i really enjoyed the combat it was really slashy and fun and like i always felt very like my character was very agile and i was in control of her the mm-hmm. entire time so that kind of hooked me into the game and then as you play it more there's just like it's such a strange odd world where you're, I don't know, It's there's no humans, it's all just like robots and androids, and somehow through that, it's kind of this look of what humanity really is, and without having any humans involved, it's it's very strange and different, I guess, was what I liked about it. Yeah, different is a good description, because to me, it oozes that personality like a Hideo Kojima game would have, where it's, it's very distinctive, right? You're like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, that's a Metal Gear game, or it's it really stands out. And just from watching Brie play it, I could tell. I was like, wow, this is a unique type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do funny things. Like you could sell your processor, right, and kill yourself. Yep. I mean, <laughs> just it was little, just like, like, like and that. there was like 26 different endings. And then you could, you know, in the end, sacrifice yourself for somebody else's ending. And there's just all these little tiny things inside of it that made it unique. And then on top of everything else, I think it had the best soundtrack of any game that I've heard in a long, long time. Like yeah. I still love that soundtrack and listen to it like when i'm having a bad day at work i kind of load it up on sure. youtube <laughs> yeah makes me calm down but um i do that with hollow knight i am yeah so there's just a lot of things that that make it my game of the year but hands down that's it for sure for me yeah and again i would actually really like to play this game i really would uh, it looks like something i would enjoy i like that frantic combat i like feeling really powerful so you're knocking down tons of enemies it looks like they swarm you a lot and you can do cool spinning moves you have these really big weapons um and you have like a little what's the little robot guy who shoots too yeah you could change him out to your little now i'm not remembering the name of it and yeah. you could kit him out i also really enjoyed the way that you'd upgrade your character through these different chips and stuff so yeah. it was kind of like oh it's you know the same take on building out skills and doing all this stuff but it made sense within the world of like it, your chips take up a certain amount of space and then you've got to swap them out and 
just something about that again it was another layer of something that made sense and kind of clicked and worked and there was all those little parts coming together making it just like a really fantastic game and then at the same time emotionally impacted like I was so sad when I finished this game like it's just kind of a little depressing I'd say it wasn't it an uplifting like it was more, game yeah it didn't seem like a game where you're gonna like feel all good about yourself at the <clears> end of it but again that's a bold move and I respect that yeah so I think that the emotional impact of a game is something that I was considering when I was thinking about my game <clears> of the year and just those other like something unique and different emotional impact means a lot to me um, again that's why I feel like to in the original sin 2 was more impactful to me than Hollow Knight. Um, I'm not sure exactly why they both had... I mean, they're very different games. They are so different, yeah. But and I liked Hollow Knight. I wish that I was a little bit better at those kind of games that I could have finished that because that was like... It hooked me really good. I think the first day I played it, I played like six hours yeah, straight. You, you played quite a bit. And then I was like, hey, you should play this game. You should play this game. And then it got to a point where was, I'm not good enough at those games. Yeah. Um, that's perhaps one reason why... Divinity the original send to edge it out. Both of these games are hard, and, and I want to say Nier Autonomy looked hard too. By the way, no, um, maybe just because I actually played one section of it and actually punched a desk. <laughs> it was like really fresh, but that was like a little mini game where you have to hack or something. Yeah, like that. I hated the hacking very much, but um, I, I didn't feel like it was a hard game. I felt no. like it was easy enough to kit out your character. Then yeah. You always could dodge out of everything and run away. So I guess I'm a masochist because all the games I enjoy are like fucking impossible. So, like for example, Hollow Knight. Really, there were parts, and they've actually fixed this in numerous patches. But and it's one of those things too, where I realize that I it's me for the most part. There are a lot of people who are really good at platformers and Twitch based games. I'm just old now, and it's not something I'm great at. Uh, but I'm okay at it. And Divinity the Original Sin 2 was a game where I felt like it was hard, but it wasn't hard because the game was ridiculous. It was just you really had to think about what you were doing. And again, that's why I really appreciate that. I appreciate a game that makes you think, decide what you're doing, and sort of try a whole bunch of different things, really try and break the game. They kind of let you do what you wanted again. If you wanted to like, bring in a bunch of barrels, stack them next to somebody, and then run away and ignite those barrels, see what happens, go for it. Um, you could redo your whole character at mm -hmm. one point, which is really cool for an RPG. You're like, I just don't like my character. I'm going to redo all his stats. Um, I really love the undead component in the, in the original Sin 2, where the undead literally take pe people's faces and like create them on their own body. It was just, I love that personality. I did like the undead component because I was, I had the the undead Fane character was one yeah. of the guys that I was controlling, and like we or you healed Fane so many times like <laughs> don't heal Fane oh my god you've killed Fane <laughs> yeah, like, oh, Fane's dead I'll again you up. I'm gonna heal you up now and Fane's dead yeah. Fane's dead and Fane's dead <laughs> because he was our caster too so he was quite squishy but yeah. seriously every five minutes Fane was dead and there was that moment where we freed a dragon and it was just it felt so good like man I, there were so many moments in that game that just hit me um, one of my favorite parts is you actually fight this giant like dune looking worm creature that comes out of the ground and when we say the whole game was on fire, our entire screen was a ball of flame. <laughs> was, and then I think it was like necro fire too. Yeah. It was like the dark. I don't know what that is. Like the, it's like a, you can't put the it out hell with, stuff. Um, it's hellfire. Yeah, hellfire. You can't put it out with rain. It just you just stay on fire. Yes. So yeah. So there you have it. Divinity: The Original Sin Two, my personal game of the year. Near Automata, my game of the year. Yep. Um, now, I just want to throw in my shame of the year, which you don't feel pressured to do. I just thought it'd be funny. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was a two-way tie, <laughs> and they're both Warhammer 40K games, which hurts oh. me dear. It hurts me so much because if you watch the channel or you follow me on Twitter, I'm a big Warhammer 40K guy. And uh, they see, usually in the past, have been good games. But man, Space Hulk, Deathwing, and Dawn of War 3 were pure crap. <laughs> I, I realize that most people will agree with me on uh, Space Hulk. A lot of people like Dawn of War 3 and more power to you if that's your thing, but it was not my type of thing. I sucked at it. I didn't find it fun. I found it derivative, boring, and just not great. So, and definitely on... It, I, I kind of was remembering that Space Hulk Deathwing came out in December of last year. Is that not true? Oh, maybe maybe this one got disqualified. It, I feel like true. it was like one of the first games that we reviewed, which right, came out... I check that because, boy, that would be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this might not be a two-way But it was tie. like really at the... It was like the end of December of last year. It could have been, actually. Let's take a look here. Yeah, we need the Jeopardy music. Space Hulk. Do you want to do a, a bet on this? I'm going to bet that I'm, it came I'm, out in 2017, but I could be wrong. Let's see here. Wow, it gives you everything except that. Ah, damn it. 
<laughs> Never mind. Space Oak Death Thing is disqualified because Chris is an idiot. So, Dawn of War 3 is my shame of the year. Okay. With a close... So, since now Deathwing is gone, that means that A Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, A New Frontier would be the runner-up. That game I'd say The shit, Walking too. Dead, A New Frontier. That was such a bad game. And I, I, <laughs> I think that I've made myself very clear within our review, if, which I will link a bunch of these reviews below. So, if you're wondering how we really break apart each of these games, but... I just had no. I actually pushed that one. I was like, "No, we're gonna play it. It's gonna be this great game." Oh my I god! I hated it that game so bad. so bad, so bad. It's just not my thing. And uh, yeah, uh, I should. We got to take that out of the game. So again, Space Oak Deathwing. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. Sorry, that was actually a 2016 game. Man, I really thought that came out in 2017. No, I was kind of remembering it. one ah. of the first games we reviewed last year. A second game, I think six. we did Inside and then that one. But yeah. yes. Uh, before we close out, I just want to again give these games didn't make our list, the top ones, but I want to say for what they did with their particular genre was really cool. Uh, Torment, Tides of Numenera mm-hmm. was a fantastic game. It's probably the best writing, uh, I would say, all year long for any other game. Close second to any original Sin 2. I actually really like Pit People. I really enjoyed that game. Mm. Damn it. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. no. Um, Flint Hook wasn't bad either. That was a cool little like side-scrolling pixel art game. Played it for a little bit. It was all right. Little Nightmares was a strange one. Um, I think we both thought that was going to be pretty high up there for us. Like we I saw think that- we have our review of Little Nightmares has like 16 people have watched that. Yeah. Ever. Like no one, no one. I've not heard one person talk about it. It's just like, huh, okay. Uh, Pyre would get mentioned, like, a, a, you know, nice yeah. mention for me just on art and music alone. Like, oh music my God. Music was incredible. I'd say Pyre is second place for me for soundtrack of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, really good game. And then What Remains of Edith Finch, as I mentioned before. Yeah. And I yeah. like Night in the Woods as well. I thought that was kind of a cool game. Night in the Woods was a really, really good game. Um, I don't feel like it's one of those ones, like, I think when we initially reviewed it, I didn't care for it that much. But as I have kind of thought about it over time, I do. Me too. There was some stuff going on behind the scenes with the developers, and they were really ragging on reviewers. And that had a little bit of an impact. I know it's unfair. Because you really need to judge a game by the game itself. But, you know, it's kind of like actors. If they do a crappy thing behind the scenes, it's hard not to be like, I don't want to watch that movie because the actor is a piece of crap. And I'm not saying the developer is that bad. Developer. But it, yeah, it, was, it wasn't all of them. It was one guy. But it, it impacted me. I was like, yeah, I, this is a great game. But you need to kind of maybe get a little more humble. Calm your tits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Cuphead was really cool, too. It's nice they actually got that game out. I am glad it was successful. I'm glad those guys are not in the poorhouse because they very well could have been. So Cuphead impossible. is one of those games that actually I really just want it on a console that I can just load it up at any time because it yeah. looks like one of those games that I want to take in bite-sized pieces and I don't really do that often on my computer. Yeah, But I it agree. was very cool. Yep. So, I don't know. Awesome year for games. Hopefully next year is just as awesome. Yeah, um, and we're actually looking for games to review coming up soon, so we will see. I've got kind um, of a list together, so we'll do our top five 2018 most anticipated. Um, yep. Very soon. So that's it. I guess that's going to do it. Yeah. our game. So one one more time. Divinity, Original Sin 2. Near Automata. Yep. Games of the Year right there from Atomic Face Palm. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Again, we really do love it. Hit that subscribe button. Leave those comments. And we will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>